Keeping everything in mind that we just learned about adding like terms, let's go and see if we could simplify some of these types of problems that are maybe a little more complex. Here we have x times 3x minus 7. This is set up for distribution, so that's what we want to do. This will be x times 3x, giving us 3x squared, and then x times negative 7, which would give us minus 7x. Since these don't have like terms, we're done. Here we've got q times 2q plus 1 minus 4 times q plus 3. Let's start with this first group here and distribution. If we distribute this q, we'll get q times 2q, that'll be 2q squared. q times 1, that'll be plus 1q. Moving on, we have negative 4 times 2 times q plus 3. Remember, this negative 4 is going to have to distribute all the way across. So, doing that, we'll have negative 4 times q, that'll be minus 4q, and negative 4 times 3 will be negative 12. Let's see if we have any like terms. This 2q squared, there's no other q squareds here, so we can leave that just as it is. Here we have a q minus 4q, we can combine those, q minus 4q will be negative 3q. 1q minus 4q is negative 3q. Lastly, we have this negative 12, nothing to combine that with, so we'll just write negative 12. Boom! How about this one here? We have y plus 3 in parentheses times 2y minus 7 in parentheses. You may have learned something like this in the past, and uh, you might have heard the term FOIL. While that does apply here, I want you to throw that out and listen to what you're actually doing here. What you're doing is you're distributing each term in the first group to each term in the second group. So if I take this y to start, I'll distribute that out to the 2y. That'll give me 2y squared. And then distribute it out to the negative 7, which would be negative 7y. Next, let's take our next term, a positive 3. Distribute that to 2y. That'll be plus 6y. And then distribute it to the negative 7 which would be minus 21. Combining our like terms right in here, negative 7y plus 6y, that'll give us a negative 1y, and everything else is just going to stay exactly the same. So we get 2y squared minus y minus 21. This next problem might show you why I told you to toss out FOIL. If you use the FOIL method, you can't do any front, outer, inner, last here because we've got three terms in this second group. So what we want to do is just distribute each term in the first to each term in the second. Again, let's start with m. We'll have m times m squared, that's m cubed, m times negative 2m, that's negative 2m squared, and m times 3 would be plus 3m. Moving on to our second term, we have plus 1. 1 times m squared is plus m squared. 1 times negative 2m is negative 2m. And 1 times 3 is just plus 3. From here, uh, you can go ahead and combine your like terms. That should give you an answer of m cubed minus m squared plus m plus 3. Warning, warning, warning. People always get this type of problem wrong. And let me show you what they do. They take x plus 7 squared, and they say, well, I'm just going to turn this into x squared plus 7 squared, which is 49. They basically try to distribute this squared here. But let's think for a second of what it means to square something. If I had a 3 squared, you'd say, well, that's 3 times 3, or 9. If I had a 5 squared, you'd say that's 5 times 5, or 25. So, if we have an x plus 7 squared, that's going to be x plus 7 times x plus 7, right? Because when we square something, we're just multiplying it by itself. So x plus 7 squared is going to be x plus 7 times x plus 7. So throw this out and always rewrite it so you can distribute just like we did before. If we distribute this out now, we're doing each term, right? That'll give us x squared plus 7x. We do our next term, 7x plus 49. We can combine our like terms and give, it, give us the actual answer, which is going to be x squared plus 14x plus 49.
49.